Welcome to MSPTDA number 27. Yes, Microsoft Power Tools for Data Analysis. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about a many-to-many -many relationship. And guess what? We're not going to use Power BI or DAX or Power Query. We're going to see how to do it with an Excel array formula. And we'll get to see the function some product and some ifs. Now, next video, number 28, we'll see how to build the bridge table if you're creating a BI solution. And we'll see an amazing couple of tricks in Power Query to make building this bridge table for a many-to-many -many relationship easy. But in this video, we got to check out this clever array formula that requires no data modeling. Now, this is the Excel workbook you can download. We're on the sheet worksheet array formula solution. Now, here's the problem. This is our fact table, and we have a book ID. So this report is not hard to create. We can do a basic formula that looks up the correct book ID and then does the sum ifs on this. But what are we going to do here? We want to also summarize by author. Now, here's the dimension table or lookup table for author. But over here, the problem is some of the books have multiple authors, whereas the data analysis book is authored by Bill, Power Query Poet, Sizzes, and Excel is Fun, Gervin. Good Data is authored by Mr. Excel and the Power Query Poet, Bill Sizzes. Now, this looks like a one to many relationship on the book side. This is a unique list. So we have the one side hooked up with more than one author. So this direction, it's one to many. But think about the other direction right here. Mr. Excel, this is the one side because we have a unique list of author ID. But Mr. Excel is listed many times over here. So when we go this direction, it's a one to many relationship. Now anytime you have that, we call this a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, worksheet formula solutions don't care about what type of relationship it is. We just build our formulas based on whatever cells, whatever tables, whatever data we want. Now, two caveats about the formulas we're going to do. The Power Query, Power BI data modeling solution is going to be easier. But for those of you that hang out at the Excel is Fun channel and like to see things done with worksheet formulas, Power Query, DAX, and Power BI, this is going to be a cool formula. Also, I'm not going to convert these to Excel tables to make it simple on creating the formulas. But if you do run this as a solution, you probably want to convert these to Excel tables because then when you add new records, everything will update. Now, we'll start with our total units by book title. And the trick is, here's our fact table. We have book ID and unit sold. But wait a second. The condition or criteria flowing in is not book ID. So we're first going to have to look up each book title in this range right here and look up the book ID. The perfect combination of functions for that is first the index function. The array, those are the items we're, we're looking up. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. Now we just need a row number, a relative position. The perfect function to look up the relative position or row number is the match function. That's our lookup value as a relative cell reference, comma. The lookup array argument, we're trying to find the relative position in that range right there. F4 to lock it, comma. We're definitely doing exact match, trying to find exactly those characters in that range. So we put a 0. Close parentheses on match. Now notice match is sitting right in row number, but it will deliver, in this case, the fourth position. When it gets down to Control-Shift-Enter, it'll deliver the third position. That's perfect for row number inside of index. And then, of course, index will get the value from that range. Close parentheses, Control-Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. And then I'm going to click and drag to copy the formula down. Click in the last cell, F2. I need to verify that all the cell references and ranges are correct. And they are. Enter. Now in the top cell, I hit F2. I need to look through this entire column right here for ME60. I see there's one there and there. And then pick out the numbers and add. Well, that's the perfect job for some ifs. 
the sum range. Well, I'm trying to add from this column right here. F4 to lock it, comma. Criteria range, well, here's all the book IDs associated with those units. F4 to lock it, comma. And there's the condition or criteria. That will be used to find a match here, pick out the numbers, and then sum ifs, close parentheses, control enter, will get the total. If we click, hold control and click, we can see down here it's telling us that those highlighted cells equal 72. So it looks like it's working. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2 to verify. Everything is looking good. Enter, Alt equals to invoke the sum function, the dancing ants are dancing around the correct range. So Enter. And there's our first report. How in the world, first, are we going to deal with book ID? And then second, what in the world? We have two columns? Well, guess what? In order for this formula to get the correct book ID, well, for Mr. Excel, one, two, three, four, it looks like four possible books. So in this cell, I need to find these four books over in the F sales and get the units. And the way the logic is going to work, since this is a single cell here, is for that book ID, I need to ask the question, hey, are you equal to GD14 or CSE1 or this one or this one? So the first part of this is an OR logical test. Now, before I do this, I am going to have to look up the author ID and then match it with these two columns. Now, I could just mash it all together in one cell here, but I'm going to do a little trick here. I've hidden a column. So I'm, there's E to G. I'm going to highlight it. And then with that cursor, right click, unhide. I first want to, based on that value, look up the author ID. Then in this formula, we'll refer to it because we're going to have to refer to it multiple times. Same thing here. I'm going to use index and match because I'm looking up something in a range. And I need to find something to the left. Now, some of you will say, well, there's VLOOKUP with an array calculation with choose and stuff like that. But the most efficient formula I know is just to do index. These are the values we're trying to get, F4, comma, row number, match. We're looking up, and I can't click there, so I'm going to click in author and down arrow. That's a relative cell reference, comma, within that range right there, F4, comma, 0, close parentheses, close parentheses. Control Enter, click and drag. Last cell, F2. All right, so we have our author IDs. Now we can build our OR logical test to deal with two columns to pick out the right book ID. Equals open parentheses. I'm going to highlight the first column. F4, are you equal to relative cell reference, that author ID? Close parentheses. And when we're doing an OR logical test, the math operator is plus. If we're doing an AND logical test, the math operator is multiplying. Open parentheses, the second column, F4 to lock it. Are you equal to the author ID? Now, the beauty of this construction right here is notice they're both going to be on the same row, allowing us to pick out the book ID. So I can ask the question, are you equal to Bill Jellin? False. Are you equal to Bill Jellin? False. But here I'll get a true. Here I'll get a false. And we're adding because our resultant array, if there's a 0 here and a 1 here, we want the resultant array to be equal to 1. Now watch this. I'm going to hit the F9 key. And you can see for Bill Jellin, in fact, 1, 2, 3, 4. The 1's are in the correct relative position for that size array. Control Z. Now I want to pick out the book ID. So I'm going to use the if function. That's the logical test. It's a bunch of zeros and ones. One is true, zero is false, comma. What do I want if it's true? I want that range right there, F4. And I'm not even going to put value of false in. If I leave that argument empty, if will put a false in where the condition is not matched. Close parentheses on the if, F9 to evaluate. And sure enough, I have what I want. Those are the three conditions I'm going to need to use in an OR logical test to see if any of these rows are this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Control-Z. 
And what am I interested in if I get a true from this OR logical test? Getting that number for however many rows there are and adding. So the perfect function for adding with conditions or criteria is the sum ifs function. Sum range, well, I'm going to highlight units. F4, comma, criteria, right here. F4, comma. Well, wait a second. This is an OR logical test. And normally, we use sum ifs with criteria 1, criteria 2, and so on for an AND logical test. But the cool thing about what we did is if I F9 to remind you, there's multiple items here. Anytime you put multiple items into criteria 1 inside of sum ifs, or for that matter, count ifs, average ifs, max ifs, it will instruct sum ifs to do an OR logical test. Notice how many criteria do we have? Six. So this function argument array operation will instruct sum ifs to deliver six answers. Control Z, close parentheses. If I hit the F9 key, there are the six answers. If we add those up, that'll be the total units for Bill Jellin. Control Z. Now the perfect function to add a resultant array of answers is the sum product. Now, we could use the sum function, because that's just an array of answers. But we'd have to use a special keystroke, Control Shift Enter. However, sum product is the perfect function when your array of numbers you're trying to add are delivered by an array operation. That sum product and that array one argument are programmed to add it correctly without any special keystroke. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and I'm going to double click and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. That is an amazing formula to get our total units and deal with this many-to-many -many relationship. Or for our formula, the fact that we had two columns and had to run an OR logical test. Now let's look at a couple other things. I'm in Office 365, and I have the Insider Edition. What that means is there's a new Excel calculation engine, which understands array formulas in any formula we create. So if you have Office 365 Insider Edition, or Microsoft says all of Office 365 should have it sometime by the end of 2019, then all we need is the sum function. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now I'm going to Control Z, Z. I want to leave it as sum product. All right, that was a lot of fun with trying to deal with this unusual adding with multiple conditions. It just happened to be that this was a many-to-many -many relationship. But this OR logical test, the if, sum ifs, and sum product has no problem doing exactly what we want. Now, if we hide this, right-click hide, of course, it still works. And over here, we did sum ifs with index and match to get total units by book title. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next MSPTDA video 28.